Hi there, it's Diane the Nursing Geek. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to the In December book tag. The In December book tag was created by Megan Tennant, who is the creator of In December. In December is a, it's an event celebrating indie authors by doing a concerted effort to give them reviews as a big thank you at the end of the year. The In December book tag is just to promote In December and just to be fun. I'll put various links, cards and things. Yeah. As you can see, my In a Mirror swag has arrived. So I am officially Team Brittany. Thank you again, Emily, um, for this great giveaway. Uh, I had already read In a Mirror um, in ebook form, but now I have it in print form. And I have another water bottle, which is good because I was reminded last night that I need to do better about hydrating. <laughs> I have a colleague whose research is all about hydration, and we talked, and yeah, I need to drink more water. So more water bottles, good thing. I'm not sure if Inamera or any indie books will end up fitting in this tag, because the way the tag works is there's a bingo card, and use a random number generator to keep selecting numbers until you get a bingo. And depending on which books you have that would fit the box, that's what you go with. Um, and some of the boxes don't even necessarily have directly to do with specific books. So we'll see what comes up. So let's start. 16, Glitter. What was a book that was hard to shake off that stuck with you? Honestly, I could have picked probably any book by Thich Nhat Hanh. Um, I love his books. They always give me lots of food for thought and they always stick with me. But I picked this one in particular because it takes such a different look at anger than you would expect from any sort of um, spiritually minded book. Instead of talking about getting rid of your anger, releasing your anger, banishing it, anything like that, he talks about treating it like a child that's crying for attention and giving it that attention to heal it instead of trying to just shut it up and get rid of it, which I find really very profound, very challenging. <laughs> I can't say that I actually am very good at doing that but this is definitely a book that has stuck with me. All right, next. 14, Evergreen. What's a book that you can read over and over again without getting tired of it? I actually don't know if this is an indie one. Probably not, but I'm going with Not Your Sidekick by C.B. Lee. It is a really fun book book and it does so much with such an economy of words that the premise is that this is a world where superheroes exist and the protagonist is in a family of superheroes but has not manifested any superpowers so kind of like being a squib born to a wizarding family in the harry potter world but this is with superheroes it's really cool. Um, just, yeah. And I, I can read this over and over again. Definitely. And the sequel is on my TBR list because there is one. I just haven't got my hands on it yet. I'll probably be able to read that one over and over again too. Next up. One, Mistletoe. What's a book with a ship you can't help but love? I was able to put my hands on Falling Free by Lois Master Bujold. Not actually the one I would have 
gone for. I would have gone for a civil campaign, but I don't know where it is. It's somewhere, not here. But Miles Borkosigan and Ekaterine, um, I don't remember her name before she married him. Um, spoiler alert for very old books, um, they do get married. And I believe they are already married by the time this book is set. It was just the only one from the series I could put my hands on. Um, they're just such a cool couple. Miles is just one of these big idea people rushing off to do all the things. And she's just really grounded and keeps him semi-sane. Um, to the extent that that's possible. Um, and they just, they're just such an amazing couple. So, yeah. Let's go with that chip. Next up. Number three, Star on the Tree. What's a book with a cover so fine you duct tape it to the Christmas tree? This, this is a tough one, okay? So I'm, I'm going to go the smart aleck route rather than trying to decide between all the covers of all the books, what's the most artistic and what I would really want up on the tree. I'm taking a different interpretation of the finest cover. I challenge anyone to say, this is not a fine cover. I mean, come on, it's John Barrowman, right? So yeah. I Am What I Am by John Barrowman because it's got him on it and that is definitely a fine cover. Let's see what's next. 21, Frosty the Snowman. What's a book with characters that felt so real they basically came alive before you? This is another, just grab one out of anything in the series, and this is actually sort of two related series. Uh, Patricia Briggs, her um, Mercedes series, and her, her Mercy, Mercy Thompson series, and her Alpha and Omega series. The characters absolutely come to life before you. Cannot say enough. Um, Meanwhile, I'm very behind because I have a TBR list like this, so I'm several books behind, but really, really amazing characters, so to read them. I should say for anybody who has wandered here from fandom space, the Alpha and Omega series is not ABO, Alpha, Beta, Omega, not that. It takes the idea of Alpha and Omega wolves in a pack, but doesn't go where fandom has gone with that idea. Just, we'll leave it at that. All right, next up, number 10, Comfy and Cozy. Where do you like to read and in what position? I will read anywhere. <laughs> I don't have one particular nook other than I often read in bed. I think a lot of people are probably going to say that. But um, yeah, that's that's what I'm going to have to go with is, is bed because otherwise I'll just read wherever I am. I'll read at a coffee shop. I'll read while I'm waiting in the doctor's office. I will read um, anywhere, anytime, standing, sitting, lying down, doesn't matter. But I guess the place where I read the most probably is actually in bed. So let's go with that. Still don't have a bingo. A couple of potentials, but not there yet. Let's see what we get this time. Number nine, artificial tree. Do you read ebooks? And if so, what is your favorite e-reader device? Well, I can't show it to you because I'm using it to record this. <laughs> yes, I read ebooks. I read a lot of ebooks. I mostly read them using um, various apps on my phone. Occasionally, I will instead use those apps on my computer, but mostly it ends up being the phone because, again, I'll read anywhere. 
Still no bingo. All right, next. Number 15, Fruitcake. The thickest, densest book you own. Bonus points if it isn't by George R.R. R. Martin. Well, there was no danger of that because I don't think I have anything by George R.R. R. Martin because I have refused to start on A Song of Fire and Ice until and unless he actually writes the final book. Just saying. Also, here's the thing. Nothing said that these had to be fiction books. I mean, in fact, my first book wasn't fiction. And I'm a nurse. My thickest, densest book was never going to be a work of fiction. There was some competition, but this wins. The Mayo Clinic's family health book. It's actually a bit out of date. However, a lot of it still holds up, so I do hang on to it as a reference for when things come up that just you don't have at the tip of your brain. Yeah. Definitely the thickest book I have. Although not by much. There are a couple others that, like I say, were, were in contention for this. Still no bingo. Let's try again. Number 11, Christmas Miracle. What is a book or series that you really didn't like at the beginning, but it turned around and surprised you? Here's the thing. I'm probably every author's nightmare reader because if you don't hook me, I won't keep reading. I have very little time. And have I mentioned the TBR list, which this is, this is not, it's like this. There's, I don't, there's not enough time in the day to read something that doesn't hook me. So I don't. So I, I can't say I've ever given anything a chance when the book itself did not interest me from the get-go. That's not to say I haven't read things on other people's recommendation that I thought, mm, I don't know about that, and then ended up hooked. That has totally happened with a number of things, but um, not with something that I started to read it and was like, eh, I'm not sure about this. If I'm not sure about it, by the end of a chapter or two, it's, it's gone, sorry. And that's assuming I had enough time to get that far. Still no bingo. Let's roll again. Number two, I'll be home for Christmas. What is a fictional world that you'd love to spend Christmas in, even if only in your dreams? I think everybody's probably gonna pick the same one. To be safe, I think it should be only in my dreams, though. Because I'm going with Harry Potter. Yes, this is one of the Icelandic ones that no, I have not actually managed to read. Alas, and now my Icelandic is so rusty, I probably wouldn't even be able to come close. That said, yes, I would love to spend Christmas in the Harry Potter world in my dreams. Because as a muggle, I probably would miss out on a lot of things. So if I'm dreaming, I should be able to see all the magical stuff. Let's go with that. Still no bingo. I'm beginning to think that this Google random number generator hates me. Maybe I should have gone with the dice after all, although I couldn't quite make it work for 24 squares. Number 17, bingo. Resolutions. Did you have any reading goals this year? And if so, how have you done with them? Well, that video will be coming up at the end of the month. Yes, I did have reading goals. I believe the overarching goal was 25 books with at least half of them not being audiobooks. And I didn't put a number on it, but more indie books. 
let's see what my books I've read spread in my bullet journal says I've done. Books I want to read, like I said, TBR list. This has to be only since I switched books. I really hope this is only since I switched books. It can't be. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Not a chance. Hold on. Let me grab the one from the first half of the year. Okay. This is a little more like it. I thought I had migrated over all of the books I've read from this bullet journal to the next one when I did my mid-year migration. Um, I did not. So, there, I think there's some overlap though. Wait a minute. No. Uh, no, that's not the case. Same author, different book. Okay. Two, I am at 32 books. Most of them are audio. Three have been ebooks and four have been print books. And four that I know of have been indie books. Yeah, that's, that's pretty darn good actually much better than I thought I had actually done. Yay. And that was my bingo. So that's it for this tag. Editing this is going to be a ton of fun, I can tell. But hopefully the result will be worth it. I hope you enjoyed this. Feel free to do the tag if you are so inclined. Um, I know you're supposed to tag specific people, but I don't want to put pressure on anybody. So if you want to do it, do it. It is a lot of fun. If you don't want to do it, don't. No pressure. So that's it for today. And until next time, I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.